diabetes mellitus. First of all, we, let us see what the definition of diabetes. Point number one, it's not a single disease, rather it is a group of metabolic disorders. And what is common in all these, they have a, they all share one phenotype common that is chronic hyperglycemia. Okay. So what we learned just now is not a single disease, rather it's a group of metabolic disorders. And let's see patient come to us, how we really, uh, you are really going to diagnose this condition? Patient having symptom of diabetes, okay, and his random blood sugar is more than 200 milligram percent is diabetes, okay. Well, or the fasting blood sugar is more than 126 milligram percent or and of course when you are talking about fasting blood sugar you should check twice or plasma glucose after two hours of oral glucose tolerance test if this is more than 200 milligram percent this is diabetes and of course in oral glucose tolerance test we use standard 75 gram of the glucose but recently hba1c till now what we know that hba1c tell you the sugar value for the last three months how sugar is controlled in the body but now the value is more than 6.5 percent this is a diagnostic criteria of diabetes now before I proceed further, I am going to ask a very simple question. After listening to the question, you, you can stop the video, write down the answer. I said symptom of diabetes, that is polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia and weight loss. They are the four classical features that we see in a case of diabetes. Now question is, out of these four, which is not a part of classical triad of diabetic symptom. But I mean to say there are some triad of symptoms which have been described in most of the textbooks out of these four which is not a part of classical triad of diabetes. Stop the video. Well I am sure by now you have written the, written the answer. The answer is polyphagia. Most of people go for this answer. Weight loss is the most common wrong answer. Answer is polyphagia. Point to note it, polyphagia is a part of diabetic symptom, but it's not a classical type of diabetic symptom. But one more thing before I proceed further, most of the time patient may be total asymptomatic. Especially type 2 diabetic patient about which I am going to talk a little later on, patient may have no symptom, then in that case you like to go for fasting blood sugar or random shka or you go for glucose tolerance test or HbA1c more than 6.5 percent they are going to help in diagnosis. Now one more thing strongest indication for diabetic screening is presence of hypertension is a very frequently asked question okay. Now so to cut diagnostic criteria for evaluation of standard glucose tolerance test normal fasting blood sugar is how much? less than 100 milligram percent and that in millimole per liter we see less than 5.6 between 100 to 125 milligram percent is pre-diabetic or impaired glucose tolerance or in the millimole 5.6 to 6.9 and more than 126 milligram percent is diabetic or more than 7 millimole per liter is diabetes now two hour after 75 gram of glucose that it is less than 140 milligram percent normal 
that is less than 7.8 millimole per liter. 1.4, uh, 1.140 to 199 is impaired and more than equal to 200 is diabetes. The same I have given in millimole per liter also. HbA1c below 5.7 is normal. 5.7 to 6.4 is impaired and more than 6.5 is diabetes. I hope now your concepts are much clear about how to diagnose a case of diabetes. Now there are certain important points that you should know, some basic concepts. Glycose urea and ketone urea, this is seen only in DKA or you can say it is seen only in diabetes, nowhere else it is seen. <coughs> but only glycose urea can be seen in young adults, so-called benign glycose urea. It can be seen in pregnancy also. This is due to re reduce renal threshold for glucose absorption. This can be seen in hyperthyroid also, about which I am going to talk in the next slides. Only ketone urea is seen in prolonged starvation. But remember, ketone urea and glycose urea see is seen only in DKA or you can see only in diabetes. No other disease has like this. Now, real glycose urea, about which I talked in the previous slide, is a benign condition found in young adults. Okay, and here you are getting uh, urine in the patient, uh, in the sugar in the patient urine, but his blood sugar, as we diagnose fasting, PP, or random or oral glucose tolerance test, this is normal. That means there is no diabetes as such in the body, but patient has glycose urea, so no treatment needed. The benign condition is a self-limiting condition. Now I have one more question for you. Tell me any other finding in the urine, especially routine examination, <coughs> which can be there in a normal young adult. Okay, stop the video, write down the answer. Well, I'm sure you have written the answer. The answer is protein urea. Even in a young adult, protein urea can be a normal finding. Nothing worry about it. It's a self-limiting condition. Elementary glycose urea is the cause, other cause of glycose urea without diabetes. It is a temporary condition where high amount of carbohydrate is taken and that lead to glycose urea. How come and which condition that you should know. And it is seen in like hyperthyroid. It is also seen after gastectomy. That means the part of stomach has been moved due to any reason for after surgery. Now, what a basic concept about it? Like in gastectomy or after hyperthyroid, normal gastric emptying time is two hours. And in these two conditions, in hyperthyroid, due to rapid GI motion, motility. And due to gastric, uh, gastrectomy, uh, the food comes to the intestine or in the duodenum or small intestine very fast. Maybe in half, hour, half an hour time, food comes to the intestine, small intestine. And it is very rapidly digested. Rapidly digested, it is rapidly absorbed. There is a transient peak of hyper, high blood sugar, but it again come back to normal very fast. Okay. So during transient phase of hyperglycemia, patient may have a little bit of glycose urea. So this is seen. So what we call as elementary glycose urea. Nothing worry about it. Now, how to monitor the glycemic control? Well, the traditional thing is preparental and postparental blood sugar. But in addition to that, gly glycated hemoglobin, and this is produced by non-enzymatic glycation and that lead to production of HbA1c. So remember, this non-enzymatic glycation of glucose molecule with Hb molecule. But point to note it, it's non-enzymatic. Well, in the normal 
adult it is less than HbA1c is less than 5.6 which I discussed in the previous slides also and they level related to mean glucose level over the last three months or so called 12 weeks and it's the best single best parameter to know about long term diabetes control in a patient. We have one more thing, fructosamine, it is a glycated plasma protein mainly albumin. What is this? This can tell you sugar value for the last two to three weeks. And it is specially used in pregnancy and in preconception status. Okay, why? In pregnancy, we don't want a long-term assessment. We want immediate effect should be there. And fructosamine test is also used in hemoglobinopathies, in hemolytic anemias, because they may interfere with the HPE1C assessment. Now, estimated average glucose. This is a new thing. So before I discuss this point, let's learn some basic concept. Basic concept is that the traditional when we maintain any, when we monitor any patient of diabetes, as I told you, we go by fasting PP or random sugar. But they may fluctuate. They may fluctuate. What do you mean by this? Let's learn the basics. Suppose you are sitting in the OPD, a patient come to you, and you are sitting in the morning time, he come to you, and the patient is there with you for the last 10 years. He's a well-controlled diabetic, he's a disciplined patient, and he says, doctor, uh, today morning I got my sugar checked at home. The sugar is 400 milligram percent. Well, there's no change in diet, no, exercise, no change in exercise, no change in drug, but sugar is very high today. And now you being his personal physician for the last so many years, maybe for the last 10 years, and you know he's a disciplined patient, he's, sugar and HbA1c are always under control. But today he's fasting sugar very high. Now you are thinking what to do this with the patient. Then he says, oh doctor, doctor, I forgot to tell you one thing. I got my HbA1c checked also. This was fasting. HbA1c is 5.2 percent. This is normal. Absolutely normal. Now it, it is more, more confusing for you what to do. This is three months sugar control is normal, 5.2. And this is fasting sugar, which is the today morning very high. Now is that you are in dilemma to what should I do with the patient? Should I increase the antidiabetic drug or not? Then suddenly he says, again, when you take a little more history, and he says, doctor, last night I went to a party. In the party I did not, and before that I forgot to take my antidiabetic medication. In the party, I had a lot of extra calories. Oh, now you are clear it. This high sugar is only transient. Transient. And this is, this we tell you the sugar value for the last three months. So, now what the suggestion is, they have the term called estimated average glucose. In short, we write as EAG. What is that? So, postparental and postnocturnal hyperglycemia may not be detected by self-monitoring BG blood glucose. SMBG stands for self-monitoring blood glucose. At time hyperglycemia may occur at midnight, patient is sleeping, it is not detected. Okay. So what they say, and even re recurrent uh, intercurrent illness may change the uh, SMBG, but they do not affect the HbA1c. So now they have come with the standardized standardization is that if 6% uh, HbA1c that tell you mean value of sugar of 126 milligram per cent. 6.147, 154 like this is there. So now the basic concept is that when we are monitoring a patient of diabetes, not only we should check the blood sugar, we should also check the HbA1c. Standard guidelines are there at least in a well controlled patient twice a year HbA1c should be checked. And in those who are uncontrolled, it may be four times also, if it is very, very uncontrolled. So a quick recap of the last minute revision point. 
So now before that, so we can say estimated average glucose is based on HbA1c, what be the carry home message for you, is a very important question for you. So a quick recap of how we diagnose the case of diabetes, fasting, sugar more than 126, uh, random sugar more than 200 milligram, and HbA1c more than 6.5 percent, polyuria produce of weight loss are the classical tired of diabetes, glycose urea, ketone urea is seen only in diabetes, ketone urea is uh, only glycose urea without diabetes is seen in pregnancy, young adult and hyperthyroid and only ketone urea in prolonged starvation. HbA1c and fructosamine are the two parameters which we use. Fructosamine is we use in pregnancy preconception pre and in hemolytic anemia and hemoglobinopathies and otherwise HbA1c we use to monitor last three months. This is last two to three weeks. An estimated average glucose is based on HbA1c. Thank you very much for watching this video.